Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found with at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar on YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. Well, that's all I have for you right now, folks, and thanks for being a part of the From the Shadows podcast family. So with that being said, let's get this episode started. Now I'm going to turn you over to your host, Shane Grove. Uh, Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the From the Shadows podcast. I'm your host, Shane Grove, and with me this dreary, rainy Sunday morning, because it's raining where I'm at, is the super producer, Jason. What's happening, Jason? Oh, I'm doing good. How about you, Shane? Well, I just said it was dreary and rainy. Well, that's still, but you got to be in a good mood. You have to, like, uh, you got to pony up. You got to power through this. (laughs) (laughs) Pony up. (laughs) Is that what you tell yourself about every day and going to work? I <laughs> gotta tell myself Go, that. <laughs> gotta pony up. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, we are excited this morning. We have two very special guests. Um, and for loyal listeners of the program, you might remember when we interviewed actor Tom Downey and we talked about uh, a movie. He's get he's. Can we say, guys, that he's the star of it? Just a stroke, Tom's. Yeah, he's, he is, he's the real star. You, you can say that. The uh, <laughs> I, can I tell see. you what, I, I, this is a true story. Some of my favorite scenes edit had Tom in it, and we had so much fun with it. <laughs> I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it as that. Tom was a very creative actor. He his lines would sometimes deviate from the script, but I have to say we we got the performance we wanted. But. He was definitely entertaining. <laughs> so you're saying he just he didn't know his he didn't know his lines. That's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he, he, something came out, so we got what we needed, and that's when in film, that's sometimes all you can hope for. He's got an intensity, you know. He's got an intensity in his scenes. You got to keep an eye out for his uh, his evil eye in the his film. Evil. He was also the uh, production designer on the film. So. Oh, oh yeah, he's a ta- he's a talented he's a talented guy. Mm-hmm. So so for for our, our listeners joining us today are Phil Garrett and Aaron Mack from the movie Evil Takes Root. And do do we need to use the subtitle too? The Curse of because I can't pronounce that. The Batty Curse Bat. of, the, of the you can say it however you want. What it's Batty Bat or Batty Bat? Um, that was actually one of our ideas for a can for like a marketing campaign. It's like how do you say Batty bot or batty bat, you know, mm-hmm. just do that out there. There was just in the, we thought we'd have all the actors like giving like what, how they would pronounce it. But yeah, everyone, I say a body bot, but how do you say no, that, it? that would, that would be a fun like gag reel at the end. Like, okay, what, what's the name of the movie you're in? And like you said, every actor trying to well, pronounce, <laughs> pronounce it. The, I don't know, whatever. The, I won't say when in the movie, but the first character who who really pronounces it or really identifies what it is is uh, played by Ade McCormick. Um, is is that the priest? Yeah, it's in the trailer. Oh, and yeah. It says okay. Bati Bat, and uh, yeah, but Ade is an amazing guy. He's um he's he's a you know clearly an actor, but he's also a voice actor on Castlevania, was in Lost and a bunch of other stuff. So he's but yeah, he's it's you know the Bati Bat. I like that pronunciation <laughs> so, of it. Yeah. Explains yeah. what it is, you know. Yeah. 
it sounds more uh, <clears throat> prestigious than Batty Bat. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be very scary. I think that would be. One batty, 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 two batty, batty. Yeah, you know, it's it's based on a Tagalog uh, Filipino demon, you know, so it'd be interesting. We probably should have tried to dig in and figure out how they pronounce it. And I, and I could have sworn I, it, like, body bots, like the abbreviated version, like the, it might, like, Batungat or something like that yeah. might be the actual... Uh, yeah, but it, it isn't just something like Beetlejuice, where if you say it like three times correctly, <laughs> <it's gonna appear. laughs> he might come to life, huh? <laughs> there are two variations. There's the Bati Bot, and then there's the Batungat. Um, okay, yeah. and they're both <clears throat> they're both these sleep sleep demons or these spirits that will haunt your dreams. And the origins of it uh, have to do with. Uh, the fact that they they live in the forest or they the trees are are their um, their homes, and so when <clears throat> if the wrong tree is fallen, then um, they go searching for a new home or a new host. And there are all sorts of legends about you know a home built with wood from one of their homes or from one of their trees can you know bring on the curse and so on. Um, <clears throat> and on our lore page on the website, we kind of list some of these stories and some links to some things. In fact, one guy put together like a 10 minute documentary about it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then there's a New York times article from like the eighties, I think where, um, or the nineties where there was this spread of sleeping sickness amongst, uh, immigrants in the U S, um, of 20 some cases of people hit with this, this sleeping sickness. And of course, you know, based on, on their lore or mythology, a lot of people were saying it was this demon. They all had beds. They all had beds made out of the wood from the trees. You know, I must be, must be. <laughs> but, uh, so there's these two variations of of what the demon is. So, so the movie then. So we'll, you know, as much as you guys want to describe it to the listeners. So it is definitely based on some real stuff. This isn't just. You know, you guys took a real entity, a real, uh, uh, as as opposed as the story may not based, be based on a real story, but the demon is based on a real story. Is well, that correct. The uh, we we licensed uh, the rights to uh, the journals, essentially, of a, of a guy named Felix Fojas. Uh, he's a Filipino. He actually lives in California now, and my understanding is he was associated was some education system and so people refer to him as Dr. Kohas but I'm not certain he has a PhD or not <laughs> but he, he wrote a, uh, like a manuscript um, called uh, The Supernatural and Beyond and uh, it's kind of all kinds of stories all over the place so we were grabbing some of the more interesting parts and kind of incorporating them into the into the story um, and the writer, Chris Freeman, uh, you know, had the most contact with them and, and he, uh, he was, some of the stuff was actually just discussions that he was having with this Felix Fojas and, and, uh, he, he had videos that he was showing of, of, of these rituals and stuff. And, and, um, so the, the, the movie's loosely based on, the body bot itself and more on on this this guy's experience with supernatural stuff in general and we just chose the body bot because he was talking about it a lot and um uh felix fojas was uh and uh and chris was sore that why he was writing some of this stuff that he was having creepy experiences and weird power <laughs> outages at his house and he said when he was writing some of it like I think a spider or something came down and was like walking across the screen. It's like, what are the chances of that? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, he was convinced that like the deeper he dug into this stuff and was like paying attention to it, the more it was coming into his world. Um, and uh, we actually, you know, we're debating on doing some kind of marketing campaign around that stuff too. Like, you know, like, when you when you're thinking about this stuff and the body bot and demons and stuff, it's you know that's how they 
kind of find their way into your world. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's Felix Fohas was the, was the inspiration. The body bot was like just one of the kind of the stories he was telling. So, so did you, once you, when you guys were working on the, you know, you guys have been working a long time on the movie. Have you guys felt the same way that, that Mr. Freeman did that st <laughs> stuff started creeping? Because we've had guests on that tell, I mean, they've told us that when you, you know, are reading about that stuff, you're, you're writing about that stuff, you're investigating it, you're whatever. And I mean, my girlfriend, Christy thinks just because we watched it on TV that we might have some, some good ghosts run, <laughs> running around. I don't know the validity to that. But, uh, I mean, does it, do you guys kind of get that feeling, too, that, or, or do you guys just chalk it up? I mean, how superstitious are you guys? Personally, I'm not very superstitious. And, like, when you're working on a movie, it's like basically every movie's like starting a, a new business. It's like you just have to be so focused on bringing it into existence that you're, you know, my view is so narrow. I don't know, it's like a blur working on the movie. Um, but I swear there was just so much bad luck and so many bad things that happened and does that like near disasters that you're just like, how could that just be like every production has its issues, but we, <laughs> we just had so many, you know, complications. And uh, I mean, I, I, I could throw out some random ones, but like, we, you know, there was this dog in, in, in the story um, and it's supposed to be have a significant part and it's supposed to be all the way through the movie. Um, and uh, we, we shot the movie and at, at towards the end when we really needed the dog to behave, it actually would not do the scene for us. So, you know, it, like when we tried to edit the scene together, like the dog was literally, you know, like facing the wrong direction. It's like never work with animals. That's the rule in film, uh, especially low budget film. But Phil, like, did you Phil, did you tell him that's what it's like working with Chris Hahn? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, dog, the dog, the dog might have an easier wrangle. I don't know. <laughs> like editing the movie, we actually edited the dog out of the movie, and oh, uh, completely out, completely well, out of the end of the movie. But we kept it at the end. beginning, so you know, I literally had to go back and rewrite some scenes. I'm not the principal writer of the film, but I had to like basically write some scenes to insert in the movie to actually bring it all together to kind of put the pieces that we had together um, to make a more, you know, enjoyable and coherent experience, to be honest with you. Um, but so anyways, this dog didn't behave. And so I like, you know, wanted to bring the dog back and use it in a different way. And, and lo and behold, the, the dog died, like, just <laughs> oh my like, goodness! Not on our set or anything like that. Like we called the uh, we called the wrangler and we're like, hey, we, we need to do some more scenes. Uh, and she's like, oh my gosh, she, he died. And we're just and he wasn't an old dog or he just, you know. So anyways, we ended up having to get a replacement dog, and this dog was, I think it's father because uh, this thing was like clearly a lot older. <laughs> she's like, oh, it'll look exactly. It looks like the same. So, you know, I'm like, I don't know. And I, I swore they, they like put some kind of dye on his fur to make it as black as the first dog because it was this like large black German Shepherd. And um, it's just like perfectly coated. Uh, and this, I could tell this other dog must have had like, you know, like gray hair or something. And so they never baked the thing. And so, like, by the end of the those reshoots, like, the, you could just tell when that dog was getting close because it just, like, the set just smelled. <laughs> 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 you know, so, or, uh, hopefully that dog's still around. But, you know, that was just one of, like, uh, the list goes on and on. We, we had, like, a fire that burned a bunch of clothing, you know, like, in one of the trucks, you know, we had a truck that was transporting all the stuff and you had a fire, you know, like, and, like, so production had to be halted and, you know, and dealing insurance claims. And, but as far as like paranormal events that I experienced, I, I have to say that I didn't feel any, but it just felt like there was this doom over the production at times. Like, how could all this stuff be going wrong? You know, it's like, 
We, <laughs> so so it felt so so it felt like the it felt like something was trying to stop you from making the movie. Yeah, was, or releasing it even because we were we were set to release this a while ago, and then you know the whole pandemic thing hit, and and you know it's like what? So it's like we were you know <laughs> all excited about getting like a small theatrical run, and and all of a sudden. No, like theaters were shut down. <laughs> Obviously, can't even show the movie. So, um, yeah, our distributor had you know talked with um, with a, a large independent chain about getting it, and you know, I mean, it's just it became impossible. And then we looked at a drive-in run, like some of the IFC films have done. But by the time people sort of figured things out in the early summer, those folks had already snapped up, you know, all those venues are booked, but uh, I've been on since January. So my, my primary job has been to secure distribution for the film and then bring it to market and help facilitate all of that. So, but even in that time in eight months, it's those little things along the way that you run into. It's like, oh, I'm trying to upload to the UK last week. Oh, it won't go up. We have a brand new secure hard line here, a gigabit connection. And um, then, of course, they use this really high-end file, secure file system. Well, from the US on that particular day or for like two days in a row, connecting to it was impossible. So I was like, oh. Well, what are we going to do with this 900 gigabyte file? Blah blah blah. But we've kind of joked about the curse of the Bati Bot along the way, and so maybe the <laughs> pandemic. The pandemic maybe is due to the curse. Of yeah, the our luck. It's been diverted. It's already been released in China right now. So <laughs> I was just I was just thinking the same thing, Aaron. That's got to be the curse well, of the Bati Bot. <laughs> well, now that you guys now that you guys are like well versed in the, the Bati Bot, man, I should have done my the bot, you know, I, I can't do it. The bot, but the bot. Now that you guys are well versed in it, and we, if we would buy into the fact that it's trying to keep you guys from putting the movie out there, is there a reason in the lore why that maybe it doesn't want to be known? You know, doesn't want its story out there? Doesn't want it to be known? Is there is there some kind of underlying reason that you guys could think of? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I guess the uh, evil likes to stay in the shadows, so it doesn't want to be brought to uh, to the surface. Um, well, it's on the wrong on our... podcast. <laughs> it's on the wrong podcast because we are we're bringing stuff from the shadow. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's so now that you guys, so you guys obviously, because it's 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 coming out the fifteenth, right? Yeah. Yep. Which Tuesday. is Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Yes. And so you, so you guys have obviously sat and watched the final cut. What, what, what do you guys? Are you guys relieved that you got through it, or are you? Is it more relief or a relief and a sense of man, this is a pretty good movie despite all this stuff that we fought through? Um, how do you guys really feel about the final product? Yeah, you know, I feel like. I mean, there was a time when we thought with the coverage we had and and the story and, and there was, you know, like what happens after principal photography is everyone just disappears. Your your actors are back in California and one of the main actor, Nicholas Gonzalez, was actually in uh, Toronto. I believe he's somewhere in Canada filming at the, the Good Doctor television show. So like but we had all these scenes that he was supposed to be in that were like trying to tie this stuff together. And we found it was like literally impossible to get the scheduling done. And so that's when I decided I was just going to write these pieces and kind of connect a different storyline. Um, but to kind of go towards what you're asking is, uh, you know, there was plenty of doubt that we were going to make a, a good movie, you know, um, with all the, the struggles and the coverage we had, but I, I'm impressed with it. I, I think it has it has its its strong points for sure. Um, very high production value, but even the story to me has there's like a heart to it. There's family dynamics and stuff that's not so typical in horror films. And um, you know, like because the demons essentially tearing apart families and and relationships and and uh, it, it's it seems. Uh, 
I'm very pleased, actually. You know, so but there is relief <laughs> that it's over. <laughs> big sigh, uh, and now we got the big push towards distribution um, and and marketing and all that. But you know, and, and Phil, I think uh, he saw. He got glimpses of one of the earlier versions of the film, and I think he could see like it was, you know, there was missing and and you know early cuts are always a problem, but this was beyond that, and and he's been helping immensely to kind of bring this to market, and and um, and uh, you know actually you were we, we had different names even towards the end of all this, and <laughs> Phil's been responsible for <laughs> keeping all that stuff together. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, do you feel like, I mean, how do I feel about the film? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, on the names, I mean, I think when it was shooting, I heard it was, it was, I went on set one day. I know a bunch of the people, Tom, of course, from Axe Giant, working together on Axe Giant. Um, uh, it was called Six. Then it was called Confessions of an Exorcist. And then it was Bati Bat. And so actually the, the incomparable Gary Jones did a bunch of poster work for us. And we have like 52 different variations of this Bati Bot poster, which is very cool. Um, but in talking to Mill Creek, Mill Creek Entertainment, by the way, our distributor in the U.S. and Canada, phenomenal people and a phenomenal company. Um, uh, so for DVD collectors, Blu-ray collectors, physical media people, uh, go check them out, their releases. But they also have their own online system now called uh, Movie Spree. So anyway, short lawyer. And so if you buy the DVD, you get a download code. So you can get a digital copy too. Ooh, but, all right. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. no, Aaron's uh, yes, everything Aaron said. And when I joined in January, I looked at the film and I didn't really know anything about it, other than just a little bit I saw on set. And um, in the time I've, you know, I mean, I've seen the movie. I can't tell you how many times I've seen these scenes. How many times uh, I couldn't I couldn't even tell you, but. It has really grown on me. It is all of the things Aaron was saying. It's, I mean, it's highly entertaining. So if you like horror, suspense, supernatural, thriller type. type Love of it. Stuff, Love it. It's, there, <laughs> there is a lot going on that you normally don't have in, these, in, in this kind of story. Normally it's like four early 20-something beautiful people being, being put upon by some evil force, right? And that's totally fine. Um, and enjoyable. We all love those movies, whether it's a Cabin in the Woods type movie or it's a, uh, I played with a Ouija board and I brought a demon into my world or whatever. But um, this has, it's multi generational. Um, you have, even within the small town setting, you've got these different worlds. You know, you've got uh, the family at the center of it, uh, the Knowles family, and, and they're out in the country. And then you have, there's the school where the girls go to school, and there's so there are all these different different things happening. There's a complex relationship, love triangle kind of thing that is a you know kind of backstory. Um, you've got the relationship between Felix, who is kind of a fallen religious figure, um, and his old friend and mentor, Father Alawale, played by Ade. Um, so you've got like it's very I wouldn't say it's complicated, but it's very multi layered. And I can see what Aaron was talking about is sometimes you, you make a film, then you look at what you've made, and whether you've been able to shoot it all or not been able to shoot it all, you're sometimes missing and sometimes even in the script you see it and you feel it. Uh, and so you try to fix it ahead of time, but you're sometimes missing that connective tissue, right? So it feels like a lot of stories that are happening in a film, but we're missing those things that weave them together, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That visibly weave them into the tapestry of the movie. But um, <laughs> but I think that that this, for the most part, successfully does that. I think what's really interesting to me is that even characters that aren't on screen for more than five to ten minutes out of the entire 91 minutes, you feel a life with those characters. You feel there's enough there that alludes to what their story is on the side, right? They, it's believable. Yeah. These characters are very believable. And for those of us who grew up in small towns, are very familiar with small towns, oh, you yeah. get that, that vibe. People know each other. It's very familial in a way or very familiar. Um, yeah, but I've really come to have... Uh, 
I don't know. I have this like, I just really like the movie. I, and I, now I'm at the point where I, you know, you, you, sometimes you have those weeks if you're, if you're working in the marketing side of film where you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I present this without giving too much away? Or how do I present enough of this scene without getting to the point? I just cut yesterday the, the two days countdown trailer and I was showing like when we first really start to have a human interaction with the demon. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take this two minutes and cut it down to 30 seconds and not give away this and not give away that, but mm -hmm. give that feeling. So, but I really thoroughly enjoy the process. Whereas I've had those weeks where, you know, earlier in the process of, of like, am I get, do I feeling like I'm getting burned out on the movie? But when I really started to just recently, I think maybe too, because we're getting closer to release that I just really, enjoy it it reminds me it gives me the feeling that i that i would have when um you remember horror films from like i don't want to say it feels like a, a horror film from like the late 70s or the early 80s but there was something about those movies because back then you're talking about people who came up through film making right and there was yeah. a lot of care and attention put into character in those movies um, and I think that in this, there is a lot of that in the storytelling. And I think with the actors, the ensemble of actors that are in the film who are all just fantastic. You never doubt them, right? Yeah. Like the, the well, it, it, you make a great, you make a great point is back in those days when special, you, you couldn't just throw spe special effects and, and stuff at movies because they weren't. You know, they didn't weren't readily available or even invented yet. And so you had to, the real horror was something happening to somebody you really cared about on the screen because then you could relate it to somebody in your life, you know, and that's how you, you know, you really care about your mom or your dad or your brother or sister or neighbor, and you can't imagine something happening to them. So you had to develop the characters on the screen that people liked and, or maybe loved because the real horror is something happening to them, you know, yeah. and that's, that's, that is what is missing a lot of times from some of these, you know, some of these movies. Like I was trying to convince Jason about watching Sharknado and I went back and I'm like, <laughs> and I told him, I said, you know, I actually, the first time I watched, it, I was like, man, that, that wasn't too bad. And then I went back and watched it again here this summer. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's so bad. Yeah, but, so, yeah, it's so bad in the good. It's bad in the good way. It has its place, but if you really want to get into the a movie and really feel the movie, you got to love the characters. And what you said about a small town is, is no matter how much you know about the people in your small town, there is always that one part that you don't know. Which <laughs> that's the other. That's the flip side. Is sure. is no matter how well you know somebody. You're, you're only one day away from opening up the paper and seeing that they, uh, you know, killed their whole family and, and, you know, ran off with the babysitter or something. You're like, well, yeah. you know. But I will say, um, yeah, and I, I do want to give us special attention to the, to the acting ensemble because while, you know, we have our, our sort of main ensemble, it's, 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 um, uh, uh Nicholas Gonzalez as Felix Fojas from The Good Doctor and in a lot of movies and things. We have uh, Stevie Lynn Jones playing Sarah Knowles um, and Sean Kerrigan playing her father, who's in a lot of the trailers, the guy with the, the buzzed hair. He was on Ford and Ferrari, and I forgot he was in that. I was watching. I was like, oh, there's Sean. But... Um, but they're all, you know, and, and Ade McCormick and John Churchill, who plays Sheriff Garland. When you watch him, you're going to believe this guy is from a town like Mount Vernon. He, he, he's got everything from the presence and the persona to the, the way he speaks and everything. And Constance Brenneman, who plays um, Amanda, who is sort of like the what happens to her is the catalyst, right, for the story. Um, and Tom Downey. And uh, Reagan Bellhorn, who plays is Bellhorn, right? Yeah. Who, pl who plays um, Christina? Um, she's in the piece that's going to come out today. It's all about her. The little two days snippet. Um, really, just across the board, like so. Those are our folks from LA, 
And then from here, we have a lot of people in the movie who are in it. Jane Mowder is a friend of mine. She's been in a lot of huge movies. Um, and she plays the part of the nun in the one exclusive clip. You never doubt any of these people. And for me, that's always the litmus test um, as a trained like theater person and film person. It's like, do I believe these people, right? Can they, even when they're when they're going through extraordinary circumstances, do do they sort of show us what it would feel like and be like to encounter a demon or to be you know fighting with something, um, you know, doing an exorcism, whatever? Do I believe them? And these actors, everybody just did was you know they're professionals and they were all in whether they're la actors you know ohio actors whatever so um i think that helps <clears throat> breathe real life into everything we were just talking about right the, the character yeah. relations, mm -hmm. um the relationships you believe that this is a father and daughter you believe that this is two men who are trying to find a way to communicate after both love the same woman you know you 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 really do believe it, you know. So, anyway, short story long. Yeah, I mean, I think, the, yeah. when we were, it's like the 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 acting is the acting is so strong. Um, it just seems, you know, the dramatic elements of the story are, are so sound that um, the, we've had trouble with some distribution because in some of these foreign territories, you know, they, they, they see the acting, they see the production value. And I think they're expecting this huge movie. And then they see that our visual effects, which are good, are just not like super high end VFX. You, they're more like TV level VFX because that's where the budget's at. And so they were commenting on the VFX and we're like, why are they worried about the VFX? But you realize as they were putting the movie in this high category like this, you know, but we were missing like the bigger actor and the VF and they were commenting on VFX, which we just and I realize, I mean, maybe this is an inaccurate interpretation, but I feel like when the production value and the acting is so solid that you feel like you're it's a it's a much bigger movie than it is. And so they, they actually picked on the little things in the movie. It's like, <laughs> why are you worried about the VFX? So they're not like, you know, they're good. They're not horrible. So it's actually, it's actually a compliment that you guys put together such well, a that's how good. I, that's how my psychology put it together. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, mm -hmm. uh, but we were both like, why are they worried about the VFX? Like, this is so much better than the stuff we see out there. Like, you, you know, you mentioned Sharknado. It's like the VFX those are just like you're just like oh my god but that's part of the <laughs> factor it's like that's what you hey don't watch. ruin it for don't ruin sharknado for jason he has not watched it i have oh, not watched it yet <laughs> <laughs> so so is so evil takes root does it i mean it's 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 a horror movie in the sense that we're going to be scared we're going to be frightened we're going to be on the edge of our seats Certainly, right? Maybe not so much blood and guts or anything, but it's going to be a, a movie we can get invested in, and and the, you know the payoff is going to be for people who watch horror movies, they're going to be on a thrill ride, right? I mean, that's what we that's what we're selling, right? Interestingly, like uh, I had some small screenings with people who hadn't seen it, who actually I didn't know, I didn't know these people personally, and I was surprised how they they thought it was scary because you know when you're editing it and you're in listening and you're making the the, the, yeah, yeah. the yeah, fake you know it's, really it's just an illusion <laughs> it's all pieced together and you know it's like you know what everything looks like before the vfx were added but i was surprised that that how effective some of the scares are but i think in the traditional sense we're like you know it's a body count type movie where they have these horrible stories and they're just trying to like give you a bunch of jump scares and then they you know, basically every actor is there as a um, as a body count. You know, like it's not that kind of horror movie. It's it's I think it's about mood. It's about situation. Uh, there's definitely you know horrific elements, um, and and you know there is some blood and stuff in there, of course, and and some um, some violence and some destruction and and some harming of family members. You know, things that just to me, it hits you on a much deeper level than, you know, say, you know, being chased by a person with a knife or something that has no connection, you know. So, um, so yeah, I feel that the horror elements are there. I, I think it's 
you know, proper to call it a, a horror movie. And I think it, it has plenty of scares. And I think a horror audience will actually enjoy the experience. I'm so forward to looking forward to the, to the reviews and stuff. Cause I just know it's going to be some brutal ones out there, which will be hilarious. <laughs> but I'm hoping some people see that there was another layer to the story. It just wasn't a simple, you know, like to me, it's like you can almost predict these, like Lights Out. I don't know if you saw Lights Out. That was, I thought, a very effective horror movie. And then like five movies came out, which were basically Lights Out. Same basic setup, same, you know, it's just, and I feel this movie is different, you know. Um, and I wish it were had a big actor so it would get the audience that I'd love it to have. But it's a small, low budget film. Are, are you trying to say that Tom Downey will not be nominated for Best Supporting Actor? <laughs> for <laughs> you know, just that, I'm just... Tom is literally, he wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. He was the production designer. And we needed someone to play this creepy priest who only had one scene in the entire movie essentially like one and a half scenes very peripheral like no real backstory none of that and when i did the rewrites like he was actually the one of the characters that we fleshed out so he was one of the actors we had to fly back and he was available it was hard to get him because he was working on some tv show um but yeah he, he started out in the in the in the behind the scenes he volunteered to, to act for the, you know, that's what actors do. They volunteer to act. So <laughs> he was willing to act I, for us. No, wait a second. I keep volunteering and nobody's <laughs> taking that. Nobody's taking that, that option. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he, his character actually, we fleshed out, you know, and, and brought him into, you know, this whole you know, tortured family dynamics and this whole thing, like these worlds are crushed, you know, falling in on everyone involved, uh, due to this demon kind of showing up. And, uh, but yeah, no, Tom was definitely his, his original <laughs> appearance in the movie was literally like almost non-existence. And now he's like actually as one of the central characters or at least. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would, you know, absolutely. I would say, I don't know, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but again, you know, it is really kind of an ensemble piece. You have some folks who who are in it a lot more, and certainly Nick, <clears throat> Nicholas Gonzalez as Felix is our is our protagonist, our lead, and, and Stevie is kind of the female lead, but I'm telling you, when you see it, you're going to feel like you know these people. They all have a real presence on screen. But, but anyway, yeah, Tom and... You know, body bot, and what were we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> well, oh yeah, yeah, distribution we'll and, and the and the film itself. I think you know, Aaron has hit the nail on the head. It's not like your typical slasher movie. It was never set up to be that kind of thing. Um, on the international front, you know, they're looking at like what's the, you know, how was I don't know. I don't want to be crass, but violence you know, um, the kind of really gra more graphic nature of horror, um, you know, and, uh, those elements are in here, but it is a, it's a, it's a kind of a, I don't know, like I said, a lot more multi-layered, I think. Than well, what, what in a foreign market, maybe, I mean, and I'm completely ignorant of it, but the, uh, violence and stuff probably always translates no matter where, what country or what language or whatever. And sometimes the story may not translate, you know, as yeah. well. Right. And I think it, a lot of that is the, the distributors and the buyers there, um, you know, looking at putting money into distribution on their side. A lot of the people who, <clears throat> a lot of the companies and the individuals who distribute lower budget stuff, right, or independent films versus somebody who distributes something like Bong Joon-ho's films like Parasite, and mother and all these other films where they know that they're in for, I mean, that is essentially falling into that category of like prestige horror, like, like hereditary and, and, you know, the witch and things like that. Um, but a lot of the folks who would distribute a picture the the more independent pictures and Gary would tell you the same about like, we were working with ax giant, we even death block coming up is, just different kinds of distributors looking for different things. And they know that if they put their film in the equivalent of something like a, 
a Walmart or Best Buy where people are in every week spending 10 bucks on a movie, they're looking for something that's going to, um, I don't know, that has a different kind of a feel to it. Yeah. Well, well, I got I got to tell you, the title that you guys settled on, I think, is the best title of all the ones I've heard. <laughs> that <laughs> I think, because, uh, and I mean, in, in in this time, you know, where a lot of people are consuming stuff online on their phones, and you only have a certain amount of time. I mean, it's hard for me to pick a movie to sit and watch because do I have an hour and a half? to invest in something like I'd almost rather watch three reruns of Seinfeld that I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I know I'm going to enjoy it than to pick out it. Cause then you get in half hour into the movie. You're like, well, I gotta, I gotta stick with it. See if it gets any better, you know, or if it gets worse, but, but the title itself is going to grab people and have people say, Hmm, what is this? All? You know, is this a horticultural, type film like are we talking about you know something <laughs> bad going down at the nursery or or what <laughs> or what you know but it's gonna it's gonna get a, it's gonna get a lot of attention and i think um uh, from the sounds of it once you guys get people from the title to grab onto it you're gonna keep them you're gonna keep them there and so we're obviously i'm looking i think jason and i are looking forward to watching the movie um just, I gotta be honest. Just for Tom Downey is the only reason not. <laughs> well, yeah. and, uh, What's interesting oh yeah, about, we're gonna take, we're gonna check it out. We might even uh, talk about it a little bit on a future episode. <laughs> well, we'll come back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The, it sounds know, great. It's like when you when you when you watch a movie. There's there's times where you watch a ninety minute movie and it feels every bit of ninety minutes. It feels like an hour. It feels like something. I was actually just watching an episode of. Uh, a big show on Amazon, uh, and it's like it was like forty-five minutes on. It felt like an hour and a half getting through it, and it's like kind of supposed to be an actiony type of thing and the whole experience. But I can tell you from the first time we started working on the edit, this movie like it, it feels like it's much much shorter because it just keeps going, and it's like there's always a new scene, always someone that's being introduced. Um, but that that commitment you talk about watching shows, I totally have that same thing. It's like I would rather mm -hmm. watch something where I know the experience anymore than commit to something that could just be this awful experience where you're just like, I'm, you know, 50 minutes into this and it still hasn't captured me. And there's so much material out there. I, I do find myself just going back and finding stuff I knew that I enjoyed yeah. in the past. I just did it the other night. It's like watch some movie I saw 10 years ago. Yep. Well, the, the older, the older, I think the older you get, the more valuable you you realize your time is. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, like true. definitely, man, I just took off that hour and a half well, of my life. So yeah. you know. Well, and I, I I agree with that. This is one of those films like you look at it, and you're like ninety minutes, and if if so much happens in ninety minutes, and. I would say it's not like one of those films that takes you from zero to a hundred and you just stay there and it exhausts you, but it has a, the, a, a really, you know, good spine to it structurally and the pacing and the rhythm of it. It it's what we would say is, uh, you know, one of the pieces of feedback from a distributor was it moves, you know, does it move? Yeah. Right? yeah. And it moves, you know, and you get to the end and, and, um, Check the when you when you Shane and Jason go to uh, Walmart and pick up your copy. Mm -hmm. Make sure you watch the deleted and extended scenes. There's a scene of Tom in there. It's a it's a it's a it's a Tom only scene that didn't make it into the movie, but it uh, features his acting prowess. So. <laughs> um, we'll definitely have to do that. <laughs> it, here's the here's the real cool thing is is that. Um, that you guys are in in our list we've gotten i mean gosh we've already been taught see this this interview has just moved you know we're already like 45 minutes into it is we haven't even mentioned you guys are based the name of you guys want to give the name of your company and you guys are based in columbus ohio right elevate yeah, is, ele, elevate is it elevate pictures or just elevate what yeah the uh, so the 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 my production company is called Genre Labs, and my goal is to, you know, I just 
love genre type films. I'm a sci-fi and horror kind of guy. And um, even though we're talking about making a drama here soon, which is, for some reason got me excited, maybe I'm growing up, but a thriller. But yeah, so I started out, <laughs> you know, with that company. I have two features now. Um, the filmmakers for the first feature were here in Ohio, but we actually shot in North Carolina due to we needed sand dunes and all this stuff as part of the story. Um, but my goal is, you know, I, I, I'm not moving to California. I want to make films here. Um, I think as we, you know, build up the parts that we need and the, and the crew that we need, we're of course going to have to bring in actors from LA because I've learned without certain actors, you, you, you know, distributors just don't, they can't even see what you're trying to show them. So that sorry, Jay, sorry, Jason, that rules us out, man. That's just poli- <laughs> hey, no, a light way. It, a it, way. It's a, like, you gotta have at least that one name that they can pull on because, you know, distributors, yeah. they're, they just know what they know. You know, it's like, if you go to a doctor, they know their thing. If you go to an attorney, they know their thing. Like distributors, only know the thing they know. And that's what I've learned is like that relationship with distributors is like so beyond important. And that should really be there before you even started your film. And somehow we got lucky. If if our foreign, you know, if um, let's just say this, like Mill Creek has been the perfect partner. I mean, they're the ones that actually helped us with the title. We were so enamored with Body Bot. We're like, it's catchy, it's different. And, you know, they pointed out all of its flaws, you know. And like how it's hard to sell, you know, everyone's going to have a different interpretation, whereas evil take root. And so they brought that to the table. Well, we threw it out there, too, but they're the ones that we really like that. And, and they actually like the extended title, bringing in the body bot. Um, but the distributor there was is critical. And I and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm kind of yeah. rambling, but, uh, but well, yeah, my, we love. No, <laughs> no, you're but you but you are. Hey, to tie to and this is. But to tie that title into songwriting, the, uh, I mean, that's the one thing. If your hook is not, sometimes you can get a song picked out of a pile or looked at by artists just based on the title and Absolutely. get a second and get a second look just based on, and it may not even be the best song in the pile, but it gets looked at just because it's something that's interesting that kind of encapsulates what the story is about or what the song's about in, in a couple words. And it, and it just is enough to interest somebody to take that second look. And I mean, that's, so next time you don't need to talk to Mill Creek. You just need to talk to a songwriter. And I <laughs> happen to know, I happen to know one that can maybe help you. With your <laughs> yeah. yeah you now know, that that's, is, that's a, true. that's a shameless <laughs> plug right there, <laughs> but it's true, but it's, but it's absolutely 100% true, though. If it, it, the tide, if somebody's going through the list of new horror movies coming out, they're going to see Evil Takes Root. Yeah. If you Batty Bat doesn't tell you anything unless you know exactly. what, unless you happen to know uh, about that uh, entity. And, right, that is and true. It does, but it is a cool, it is a very cool name and stuff. But I think you guys, I think you guys nailed it. Like making an evil takes root because yep. I think that'll draw more people's attention just off the, off the name alone. But I think it's cool. I think it's so cool though. What people are able to do in Ohio, like how the movie making and television making landscape has changed. Um, and just with our firsthand experience of somewhat being a part of it, you know, how cool you, you, you don't have to like, I wish I was coming through high school stuff now and, and could knew what you could do without having to go you know i didn't know any i mean i can't even imagine uh telling my parents back in the day hey i want to go be a i want to go write movies even though that's what i wanted to do even in high school they're like are you nuts there's a good factory right down the road you can go get a job at exactly <laughs> i just it's so i don't think kids i don't think kids realize everything that's open to them beyond like Let's make some a video on TikTok. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I wish I had these tools. When I was a kid making my oh. movies, we had, I mean, like, we didn't have nonlinear editing. We had to, like, you had two tape recorders. You had this crappy VHS, <laughs> which was, like, I forget the resolution. It's, like, 260, whatever. 
it's like the tiny and it's like you and we're you're cutting between decks and if you screw up the edit i mean half the time we're actually just editing inside as we recorded it you know it's like if, <laughs> if it, the scene didn't work you had to rewind it and hit play again and capture the scene like the kids <laughs> the, today have these tools and i don't even think they're that interested it's like man if i had i could just, yeah. like my iphone could just blow away any tool i ever had and um and i i think kids uh today i mean i hopefully they get well we We've actually met some great young people coming up in the area that are just really super talented. Yeah, our goal, I really think, you know, Central Ohio and Ohio in general, is, I think we're just going to get bigger and better. I think if, if we had the, you know, more stable season or something, you know, even though like the change in the season here is such an amazing thing, it's just there's nothing more frustrating uh, than trying to work a schedule when you're dealing with, weather changes and you know here it's like if you don't finish your scene in the fall and you come back two weeks later those leaves might be gone you know so like it's like mm -hmm. exactly. those realities that's why everything's shot in california it always looks the same but that's why it's kind of boring when you see a california movie these days because it's like i've seen that I've seen that background i've seen the skyline i've seen those trees it's like there's nothing uh that was the other comment we got from like our editor is British, and uh, he's just—I love this movie. He's like, uh, I won't try his accent, but he's just describing how he just—you know, you don't—you see, <laughs> don't see the Midwest, you don't see the yeah. seasons, and you don't see the stuff that this movie uh, brings to the table. Um, but I, you know, I, when I was talking about my company, I forgot to mention Elevate is—is is kind of like the company that helped save me here because basically it was me at. When, the, when all the smoke had cleared, it was me in a movie that wasn't finished. And, you know, I and I had partners here at Elevate. And, and you know, so they helped me basically take what was going to be uh, something that just was a tax write-off into, you know, actually a product that we could bring to market. So, so Elevate is, is definitely a major player in, in the success or at least bringing this film into existence. And uh, so that's uh, I didn't want to leave them out. I got to talking about genre labs and forgot to mention that that's Elevate, awesome. elevates a big piece of this. So that's OK. Now. So so before, because I'm on a time crunch here and I, I've already got the text that says, come on, wrap this up. We got to go. Uh, <laughs> but there is one question I want to ask is, OK, why have we not been able to make a really good Bigfoot movie? Yes, I mean, exactly. I mean, I, I mean, I other than other than Boggy Creek, which you know is just more of a cult classic, and I think I think I mentioned to Phil the best movie that I've seen that kind of somewhat was the Man Who Shot Hitler and Killed Bigfoot with Sam yeah, Elliott. It's, it's great. That was a great. Until they yeah. get to the creature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's terrible. But. It, the premise was really, really good. Like, why have we not been able to make a good Bigfoot movie? I think the key is, like, in every story's been told, every, every, you know, I mean, back since they were doing Greek plays, it's like, you know, the stories is from all the way then till now, like, as far as characters and things like greed and everything. But the, the key to that is we need, uh, we need that, that fresh take on it, like, you know, my envision just from what you mentioned, it's like, how do you like make it about Bigfoot? But like, it's, it's like, you don't even know it's about Bigfoot until at some point in the experience, it's like, Oh, this is this underlying thing going on. Um, but no creature movies. That's my thing. Like, <laughs> I, I, that's on my list of things I want to do. I want to make creature movies. Um, you know, so, but yeah, yeah, I think it comes down to uh, story and script. I mean, everybody wants to make the kinds of movies that they want to make. A lot of times it's, this is the movie I never got to make, or this is the movie I loved growing up. But I think when you take something like Bigfoot, we've seen so many, so many times. I think it's two things. It's exactly what Aaron said. What are you, what's new, what's fresh? I would always tell students when I was teaching Genre is the formula. It's convention, what we're used to, what we're expecting, and invention is that thing that's new, right? Like District 9, is, there's a story there that it's a metaphor. It hooks you with the sci-fi, but it's doing this other thing differently. 
as an example. But um, I think uh, it comes down to uh, when you say good, I mean, there's a good question right there. Like, what does that mean? And uh, what kind of <laughs> like one of the films that we love? Okay, we both, satisfying. Like, yeah. Why isn't there well, a satisfying? Like, like Mothman, right? Uh, the Mothman prophecies, the Mark Collington. That was not very, that, uh, yeah, that was not very satisfying. I yeah, I loved it. I, I loved it too. I mean, the whole experience. <laughs> I, I would say, have you seen the the previews? I don't think it's out yet because of the whole pandemic. But there's a movie called Antlers coming out. Right. No. But, no uh, yeah. It looks super highbrow. It's about a Wendigo, I believe, which is oh okay. Yeah, so this mm. like, but. The only time I've ever seen it was a Masters of Horror did a Wendigo one. It was awesome. It was one of the better ones they'd ever done. But I'm so excited for that movie because it's it's a creature feature essentially, and it looks like they just there's a level of intelligence that you want to see in a horror movie. And and when that finally comes out, we should talk and see if there's a if there's a big Bigfoot version of that approach because to me that it's like. Any story can be told. It's just like how do you build it so it's unique and interesting and right and you know yeah. I mean, like Mothman as the exam as an example. Like Mark has said, you know, he didn't really just want to make a, a monster movie, right? Because it's psychological. It's cosmic horror. Like you you read the book and you're like, nobody really knows, right? It's this thing we can't quite understand. And um, it would have been nice to see a little bit more of something, um, but just. It's, it was almost a tone piece, you know. Yeah. But with Bigfoot, I think it's it's got to come down to um, it's an approach. Is it fantastical or is it realistic? Mm -hmm. right? When Antlers comes out, we should all get together and watch it, and then we'll figure out Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Looks, <laughs> yeah. Check out the trailer for that. That looks it looks incredible. It got yeah. pushed. Yeah, trailer. it did. But I, I saw the teaser for that, and uh, I thought that was going to be good because I was like, oh, actually, a movie about a Wendigo, huh? And yeah. And then all of a sudden you didn't hear anything else about it. I know it was because of the pandemic, but still. Yeah, when I saw that, when I saw that, like that, and like it's it's perfect. It's like it's this creature movie which I'm gonna make, and it just looks like it's highbrow intelligent. There's these layers, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited for it. We'll we'll see. Maybe it'll be a disappointment. We'll have to outdo it. With <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to wrap this up, let's talk about something that will not be a disappointment. Evil takes root. Let everybody know because this will come out a couple of days after it's it's available. So let everybody know where they can go watch it, uh, where they can you know your website and and so other social media so people can follow and let you guys know how much they love the movie. And if you don't love the movie, we send the stuff to Jason. He'll he'll take care of it. Phil is like a Swiss Army knife. He's good at so many things. <laughs> And Phil has actually basically created the website. So of all the other things he's doing to make this movie get out there and, and help market it, he's actually skilled enough to create this amazing website. So if you go to eviltakesrootfilm.com, it has all the outlets that you can find it, where you can pre-order it. Obviously, by the time this audio comes out, it will be past that. But our hope is this will push way into Halloween and we'll still be promoting it. Um, but evil takes root film .com. The film comes out September 15th, 2020. Um, that's a Tuesday. That's just a couple days away. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Trailers everywhere online, um, on our website. I have to change the language right now, but it says pre-order and watch. So pre-order is, um, you know, where you can buy the physical media through online channels. Mm -hmm. Watch would be the digital outlets, um, it'll be on all the major ones. It's uh, except for Netflix right now. So um, we'll be updating that. But yeah, evil takes root film dot com. If you just look up evil takes root uh, or body bot on Instagram, it's on there. Um, we put putting a lot of teasers on there and, you know, stills from the film. Um, but yeah, Tuesday, the 15th. Uh, like if you want to walk into a store and buy it, it will be at Walmart possibly Best Buy, and Mill Creek, real quick, is trying some new things with this. This is their first real horror movie in a while, or one of the few horror movies they've released. They're trying something with this the big studios have been doing for a while, which is Blu-ray MOD, which is Manufacturer on Demand. So if you're a Blu-ray watcher or collector, 
that will be rolling out a little bit later, but you'll be able to go to a site and buy it. And it's uh, it's like the Warner Brothers vault or something. They 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 manufacture it, send it to you, right? So it's um, it's pretty cool. And I do have to give them one shout out to uh, also again about the artwork because I think this one they put together something spectacular. It's going to jump off the shelf in the middle of all these other indie film indie films. So mm-hmm. anyway, okay. Well, we we appreciate you guys coming on. We loved hearing about the movie. We know I know our fans are going to dig hearing a little behind the scenes stuff here. And, oh yes, uh, we'll put a Definitely. we'll throw up some tra- we'll throw up some trailers this week leading up to uh, to Tuesday. So Phil, email me those trailers and I'll I'll get them up for you guys so you can, so uh, our fans can go check it out. So well, we wish you guys huge success with this Thanks. movie. And uh, we can't we can't wait to see it. We can't wait for our our fans to check it out. And hopefully uh, it's the beginning of a lot of other good genre horror films, creature films, <clears throat> hint, hint, Bigfoot films. <laughs> you guys. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, you guys have a great day and we're excited that uh, that you guys joined us. So. Absolutely. Thanks so much yep. for uh, thanks for, for having us involved. Us yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank yep. you very much. Uh, good to see you again, Phil, and uh, good to meet you too, Aaron. Hey, nice good to, to see you too. guys. Yep. Thanks, thank guys. All right, all right. We'll we'll catch okay. you guys later. I gotta hit the road. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. See you, Shane. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.